from a coach's point of view, what did you read into that? Why was that such a poor spectacle? Well, it's interesting the way you look at it. I mean, to, probably to some members of the, of the footy public, it was a poor spectacle. I'm sure Neildy would agree. I sat at that game. I thought it was a fascinating mm. tactical battle. Mm. I mean, both teams are trying to do a similar thing. It was a real arm wrestle. Yeah. And quite often grand finals are played that way. Low scoring, yeah. high pressure, quite a few errors because of that pressure. Yeah. But, you know, St Kilda have, over the last three, four, five years, been very, very difficult to score against. And even if you can tend to stop them scoring and keep it a low-scoring game, and even if they're on top of you, they don't tend to blow you away. So even though they did that to North Melbourne last year, yep. but uh, they're always in the game. I mean, St Kilda, St Kilda were right on top yeah. in that game, right on top. But then you look at the scoreboard, and, and Geelong are right in it. So yep. I thought it was a fascinating battle. Probably not a great spectacle from a footy supporter's point of view, but a, a fascinating tactical battle. What do you make of it, Mark? Yeah, very similar to Brad. Uh, I loved it. And again, it depends. There's always many ways to look at things. If the, I suppose some of the, the media outlets, had they promoted it and said, you know, what a terrific contest. It was right down to the wire. You know, there were obviously some big hits. We need to understand that in each round one, every year, uh, the, the skill skill errors are up because, you know, the players are, haven't played at that intensity for a long time. They've just come off a competition that had six and two. Now it's three and one. And look, for the contest to go right down to the very last kick, you know, I thought it was absolutely fantastic and uh, good, for, good for Chris to get off on the winning foot, I suppose. It was. Every year we look forward to the Anzac Day clash. It's, it's a massive one regardless of positions on the ladder between Collingwood and Essendon. Maybe this year it's going to take on a different slant because did the Bombers get out of the blocks against the Bulldogs? They must have impressed you. Yeah, they did. Uh, and we saw that game as most people did. Yeah, I, I just thought Essendon were absolutely fantastic. They're always, they certainly have uh, their own version of a defensive half-ground press. Yep. Uh, their inside 50s in that game was absolutely phenomenally weighted uh, their way. Uh, as well as that, their offensive ball movement was absolutely yeah. sensational. So, you know, clearly form side of the competition. Yeah, the I, don't, I, don't think, I don't think you're 71 inside, inside 50, 50 is but extraordinary. I mean, quite often um, coaches get criticised when things go wrong and, and they get overly pumped up when things go well. You know, I think Matthew Knights was heavily criticised, but, yeah. you know, Essendon's ball movement has always been pretty good yeah. offensively, and I think Matthew Knights has to take a fair bit of credit for that. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't think people will want to give him too much credit because he's, he's no longer coach, but there's always a lag period, and I think a lot of the things that Matthew Knights taught those Essendon players we saw on the weekend. Mark, you played them in the NAB Cup Grand Final and, and beat them. Did you think at that point in time you said they might be a real threat this year? Oh, no doubt. Uh, very obviously they had that the same game plan and you know we struggled with it at times and it was good to I suppose have that type of game prior to round one. Uh, yep. it, it, they're very hard at it. They've got a terrific defensive plan. Uh, their offensive plan, as Scotty just said, has been on the move for a couple of seasons. But I think they've added to that as well. And and they're set up around the stoppages. You know, it, it, in terms of that, you're playing against a brand new side. But they've been very, very impressive. Talk to us about your midfield uh, setup. Obviously, the elite midfield in the competition with some superstars in there. How many rotations do you just run through there? How many players do you run through the midfield? Uh, we'd like to think we've got probably 10 to 12 players that yep. are capable of going through there. And again, that, that's great because, like I said before, with the Dane Swans of the world and, and Scott Pendlebury and, and Thomas and Wellingham and these guys having to spend some time forward, yep. it, it, it uh, opens up the space for guys like Beams and, and Blair and Cracker uh, and you know, Brent McCaffrey perhaps to go through there. So, look, I suppose as, as the season goes, we'll find that more teams need to use more players through there. And especially if the, you know, the guns, if you want to call them that, are going to spend more time on the ground. It'll come a time where they probably need a rest and can't play it all that week. You tend to favour the, the one Ruckman set up with a pinch hitter in Lee Brown. What changes in the midfield in terms of their structure and the way they approach the stoppage when it's Darren Jolly in the Ruck as opposed to Lee Brown in the Ruck? Yeah, look, there, there are slight changes, obviously. You know, Darren is your traditional ruckman. He's a lot taller than Lee. He's, he's also a lot heavier. Yep. Uh, so the boys, they, they adjust slightly to that. But again, it, it also depends on what opponent Lee goes in there against. Sometimes, if we're playing a side that has that similar philosophy, Lee's actually in there against someone of similar size. And if you have a look at his ruck work against people of similar stature, it's very, very good. So when that happens, it actually doesn't change too much. Does it make it easier if Dane Swan spends... Uh time forward to shake his tags is it, and is he getting people run with him as much as uh, probably he did a couple of years ago? 
Uh, look, Alistair, again, it depends on the team. Some yeah. teams run with the idea that you can tag someone. Uh, other teams are very structure orientated and just let Swanee go and yeah. hope that their structure will gobble him up, so to speak. It doesn't make it easier. Look, uh, if he's sitting forward and we're winning clearances and he's taking a mark and kicking a goal, yeah, that's easier. But if he's sitting forward and uh, we're losing a couple of clearances, I, I think the box gets a little bit nervous. At different stages, Mick Mouldhouse has handed over the reins to the assistants, to, particularly in the NAB Cup. You're in charge for the semi-final against West Coast. Yep. Did you do anything different? Do you, I guess you still have to... I know it's a pretty much set in stone game plan, but everyone's a little bit different, the way you communicate, the, way, the, the type of messages you deliver. How did you find it? And uh, it's obviously given you a taste for a lot more, I suspect. Yeah, look, great experience. Uh, all the assistant coaches are, are really thankful to Mick and also to Jeff Walsh, who set that program up. They're, they're big on professional development at Collingwood, and uh, if you're an assistant there, you're one of the beneficiaries of that. So that's absolutely fantastic. You, you take a couple of extra meetings during the week. So I think that experience is invaluable. So that's from a personal level. And Mick's also got the theory that giving the experience to, to his assistants, that exposure to do it, it, it mm. can only help make the whole group stronger. So if we can have the, you know, one of the strongest coaching groups going around, if he can, uh, he can help that, uh, you know, that's great. In terms of do you do differently, you're right. Like, I communicate differently to Mick and Matty Lappin did it differently and Bucks did it differently. Uh, in, in terms of, you know, the game plan, no, it's, fa it's fairly set. <laughs> I don't think we we're going to, you know, come out and say, well, Mick, you know, I'm just going to, pull this move and uh, we'll worry about what you think. <laughs> would have been courageous, wouldn't it? <laughs> Did you learn a lot? To, you obviously had the same experience um, coaching uh, in, the, in the coach's box for Collingwood. Um, did you glean a lot out of that oh, that you've taken into your own coaching? An absolutely invaluable experience. Yeah. I mean, you can be an assistant, uh, I think, for 10, 12 years. Yeah. And if you've never had that experience of being in the hot seat and being the one who actually makes the calls on certain things, nothing will ever prepare you for that. So, you know, the, the, the process that Collingwood set up and, and that Mick helps develop his assistant coaches, and I was very lucky to get that opportunity too, uh, is absolutely invaluable and it's the best thing to prepare you to be an AFL coach. Where do you go from here? I mean, if Mick Malthouse doesn't coach uh, anywhere next year, um, do you stay at Collingwood or are you trying to get your own job? Or is that an unfair question at this stage? <laughs> well, <laughs> it's a blunt question, <laughs> isn't it? Well, it's I mean, so you, you were close to getting the Geelong yeah. job, weren't you? No, no, no. No, I wasn't, wasn't even interviewed for the Geelong job. Uh, that was a good bit of mail I got there. That was excellent. Bit of <laughs> look, where do I go? Look, at the moment, my contract, uh, look, I'm in negotiations with Collingwood to, to extend my contract. And, uh, you know, at the moment, I'm at Collingwood for the rest of this year. And, and as Scotty knows, Mick is absolutely wonderful at making sure that everyone is playing their role and has their eye on the ball for this season and everyone at Collingwood will do that and, and what happens after that will work out yeah. in due course. And, and well, Neil will make a, a, a very good you know, senior coach one day but you know, I think anyone who wants to be a senior coach, the best advice you know, that I could give them is just concentrate on being the best assistant coach yeah. you can and then yeah. people will recognise you for that and eventually yeah. offer you a senior job somewhere. I suspect Mark's stocks are rising by the day the way Collingwood are going at the moment. Uh, don't forget a real treat for Fox Sports.